Okay, my name's S. Rob, this is Pirate Riot, and I would like to talk about slavery. That's right. Has it went away? Hell no, it still exists. Slavery is real, it exists. Now, when I'm talking about slavery, I'm not necessarily talking about people who are, you know, stuck in a car wash and couldn't get out. Happens, does happen. Or someone that's a sex slave. I'm talking about old-fashioned slavery, where people can be bought and sold. Where you can actually, you know, exchange contracts. That's what I'm talking about. Old-fashioned. Does it exist? Yes. If you look in Brazil, it wasn't banned until 2001, which means it's still going to be there. Unfortunately, it's still going to be everywhere else. Slavery is real. That's the reality. It does mean that all these shirts and things that you get that are manufactured very cheaply by these lower class people, lower caste people in different countries, actually what you're doing is you're supporting slavery. Let's get real. If slavery is real in any country in the world, there is no way you're going to get third world countries paying their own people wages when they can simply own them. Which means a lot of the cheap stuff around the world people like is paid for by the use of slaves. That's right. I'm not talking about virtual slaves or almost slaves. Like a Marxist idea. So, you know, the uh, Marxist idea that some people like, I don't own the means of production. If they don't do that, they are slaves. No, you can't buy and sell them like slaves. But these people can be bought and sold because they are slaves. It also means that if you go miss, somebody goes missing, it's a possibility that we were taken and be made into a slave. You've got to have that as a possibility because where could that happen? Anyway. What they would need is an embassy if they were in a country where slavery wasn't recognised. So basically you're looking now at people with links to diplomats. People who have diplomatic passports. By that I mean diplomatic documents that they can't get blamed for different things. I know they say, oh well, we can't blame them for things really. But in reality, if they do that, they would do that to your people. So it's a cast catch 22 they can't do anything. So what have you got then? You got diplomats kidnapping people. Well, how would they fit in the diplomatic bag or the diplomatic box? You know how they would? Because that's how what they're designated to be. They designate the plane as their diplomatic box. How would they move them? Boat ship? Possibly underground? You know, you're looking at something that is big. Well, where could that mean that people could be taking slaves from? You know, London's got a load of embassies. Now, I think a consulate still has some power, but we've got loads of embassies in London. And this means that what we've got to look at is slavery. It means that when we're looking at people who are... Look at London at a place in the same. There's a lot of homeless people. No, the problem isn't that there's a lot of homeless people. The problem is there's too few. Because where the hell have they taken them? And don't just think homeless. It could be anyone. How does that happen? You check into a hotel. It turns out it's not a hotel. You, you know, you're walking into these things. Think James Bond. Ian Fleming, very clever man. What he did is he put all the stuff that spies actually came up against in the books and therefore in the films and they've kept with the same tradition you know he goes into a bar and the seat moves around and all this stuff yeah they do that why not you know why they do it for because it's elaborate because they have the funds and they're dealing with difficult people so when you look at this thing well what does it do the rest of the time when james bond's not there does it roll around yes you know it does it collects slaves is what it does it collects people that want to take as slaves that's it why was James Bond perfect? Because he was a different colour to the people in the bar. They need to have slaves that can easily recognise from each other. That means if you're talking a white group of people, the black ones are perfect. If it's black and white, they're perfect, but also Chinese, and they could probably take anybody. And that's what you're talking about, you see. So all this stuff's real. You have to open your mind now. All the stuff that Ian Fleming wrote down is real at the time it still is. A lot of those tricks are under the Stasi, which were the uh, secret police force. The Czech secret police. And a lot of the tricks that are used by people like that, or some people believe by spies, were invented by the Stasi. Okay? So don't say, oh, it's too elaborate for that to happen. That's probably why it's done partly that way. So when you describe it, no one will believe you. So that the police won't do anything. They've got a great excuse that it sounds too elaborate to be true, so they can sit on their asses and do nothing. Uh, when it's actually true. So that's it. You know? Careful. You know, if you're walking around places and you think you've got that bad instinct, something's going to happen, distance yourself from the embassies, okay? Because if they're going to do this, and they will be doing it, they'll be doing it away from the embassies, uh, and sorry, near the embassies where it's safer for them. Away from the embassies, you're better off, okay? This, my name is S. Rob, this has been Pirate Riot.